right, we've got a major warning from Height about its thick Q80 Trio AIO cooler. NVIDIA's RTX Remix gets a game-changing update for classic titles, and there's a wild new DDR5 memory stick from Gigabyte and V-Color, and it sports a built-in OLED display because we need more screens on everything, please. But that's not all. NVIDIA has quietly vanished the Founders Edition RTX 50 Series cards from certain stores, which is sparking even more rumors about an upcoming supercard refresh, and AMD just hinted at a big GPU surprise to counter NVIDIA's moves. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, attention PC builders. If you've got a height, thick Q80 Trio AIO in your rig, you need to listen up because height just dropped a bombshell, issuing a urgent warning for people that have this component in their PCs. Let's take a peek. Now this came out a few days ago, so I'm just gonna touch on it real quick for those that may be affected. And more importantly, let's take a look at how height is responding to having a component with potentially some manufacturing defects. This, uh, you can learn a lot about a company by how they respond to things like this. So let's take a quick peek. Uh, I just released this on their website a few days ago. This is an important update for the Thick Q80 Trio AIO, a liquid cooler. Uh, user reports of coolant leakage in some units packaging upon delivery. Affected products were promptly secured and set to a manufacturer for failure analysis. This is uh, all due to a fragile component that is inside of these AIOs. And now, how do you know if this is a product that you have in your rig that you should be worried about? Well, there's not a whole lot of things that you can see on the outside. This is an internal component, so you may not know if this is an issue other than your cooler not functioning at all or potentially failing. Uh, effective immediately, Height is directing users to cease using the thick Q80 Trio AIO and remove the cooler from the system immediately. Distributors and resellers have been notified to cease using and selling the Q80. Customers who purchase directly from Height's website will get refunds and instructions on how to dispose of the AIO soon. Now, this is uh, obviously caused, as mentioned, in the update due to a fragile internal component. And that can lead to coolant leakage, which can damage other PC components inside of your system. Company is obviously working on a solution to recall all of these and a plan to address the issue. Now, this is interesting. I've been looking at some feedback online, some customers, little uh, miffed by this, but on the flip side, it's how a company communicates stuff like this when it happens, right? Hype being very transparent with this. They're not trying to hide it. They're telling people to get it out of their systems before something bad happens, which is a good look for the company. You know, I'm going to watch how they handle the recall height historically in the times that we have dealt with height when it's come to products have been very prompt and have been willing to fix issues like this and own it. So obviously a lot of different people who have this unit potentially in their builds now have some instruction on steps that they can take to get that resolved, including a full refund and height making things right with customers. So if you do have a thick Q80 trio, something you may want to take a look out for. And this is really like the worst nightmare for a PC builder right? I mean, a leaking AIO is the fastest way to turn a high-end rig into a paper rate and height doing the right thing by issuing an immediate warning. We're going to keep updates on this as we find out more. Do you remember all those old games with particle effects that looked like pixelated dust? Well, NVIDIA's RTX Remix is here to fix that. The latest update to their modding platform adds support for path traced particles. That means the modders can now make things like smoke, fire, and explosions look even more realistic with full lighting effects. Let's dig into this. NVIDIA's RTX Remix adds updates for path-traced particles to classic games. NVIDIA just rolled out a pretty big update for RTX Remix, the tool set the modders use to bring ray tracing into older PC games. Now, a lot of you guys may be familiar with apps that you can buy on Steam, like Lossless Scaling. A lot of people enjoying that. RTX Remix has its own benefit. Benefits. Check this out. This would make things like fire, smoke, sparks, or even dust rendered with the same lighting rules as the rest of the world. Instead of flat effects pasted on top of the game, these particles now cast shadows, bounce light, and reflect off shiny surfaces, making them feel like they belong in the scene. Now, here's the bold claim from NVIDIA. NVIDIA's claim is that you can have tens of thousands of these particles on screen without your system grinding to a halt. Now, that might sound ambitious, especially since games like Portal RTX showed how tough particle-heavy scenes can be on even high-end GPUs. Many players with cards like the 3090, still very uh, high-end card, all things being considered, saw frame rates 
dipped below smooth levels when the action heated up. Nvidia says RTX 30 series GPUs are the safe entry point for this new update, but realistically expect to keep relying on tools like DLSS to maintain steady performance. Still a whole lot of people using the 30 series, so this could be of interest to you. And really, this is somewhat of a game changer for the modding community. It's like putting a fresh coat of paint is a complex lighting algorithm. Now, I've been reading a lot of community comments and things like that. A lot of people thrilled on this. This opens up a new world of possibilities for modding classic games and making them look better than ever, which is kind of fun. And it's also a great reason to maybe dust off some of your old favorites. The fact that this is a free update from Nvidia is a pretty big win for everybody. Most of the community response, and I'm curious to see what you guys think, has been overwhelmingly positive. A good example of Nvidia listening to its community users and giving them the tools that they need to be creative. Now, as with past updates, the list of supported titles is big. You've got more than 165 classic games built on DX8 and 9, and they can work with RTX Remix. The community has already used Remix to rebuild fan favorites like Half-Life 2, Need for Speed Underground, great game, and more with over 2 million downloads shared so far with the new particle system. Those projects are about to look a lot more dynamic, bringing older games a step closer to how modern players expect them to feel. Look at NVIDIA go, breathing life into old titles. You love to see it. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Are you tired of looking at boring old RGB on your RAM sticks? Well, Gigabyte and V-Color have heard your prayers. They've teamed up to create the world's first DDR5 memory with the LCD built into it because we need screens all over our PCs. It's what the people want, right? Is that what you want? An OLED screen on your RAM? I'll let you be the judge. Let's dig into it. That's right. This is a collaboration with Gigabyte and V-Color. This is DDR5 memory with the very first built-in display, an OLED display nonetheless. This was uh, back at Computex, V-Color introduced Xfinity Plus, which is DDR5 memory module with an integrated display. This was built with support from Gigabyte. The innovation provides gamers and overclockers with real-time system monitoring. You can see in the photo there, we've got some temps on the screen, as well as the mega transfers on the memory as well. Real-time system monitoring limits the need for additional cables or software, which is kind of fun. The OLED display shows key data, including memory profiles, capacity, speed, timings, voltage, and temperature. It even works during post, letting users view. Now, this is kind of fun. Let's users view diagnostics diagnostics before the operating system loads, which could be helpful in many different scenarios. Now we're in a world of excessive RGB, and I guess this is the next logical or not so logical step, depending on where you land on the world of RGB and pretty colors and screens and PCs. It's totally unnecessary, but I kind of like it. This is really intended to be the ultimate flex for anybody with a glass side panel. That's kind of the idea on this one, at least in my opinion. Xfinity launches its kits with one display module and one standard module, and you can get these in black or white. Mass Production is going to start, I don't know, pretty much right now with the first release going to be on Newegg and then Color's website, and then you'll see it show up on Amazon everywhere else, all over the place, I would imagine, not too long after that. I give it about a week until someone runs Doom on this thing. It's coming. You can mark it here. Remember this. Subscribe so that when we uh, release an update on this, I can tell you I told you so, because someone, some mad lad out there is going to be running Doom on these RAM sticks. I guarantee it. So what's the community think? Well, they're having a field day with this one. Some people obviously think that this uh, is the dumbest thing ever, but others are already planning their next build around this bad boy. And uh, you know what? I think I'm somewhere in the middle on this. It's a good way to show off your rig. Uh, it's not going to give you a performance boost, but it might give you some of those bragging rights if that's what you're chasing. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, would you put RAM, RGB, OLED display in your PC? Is that the next logical upgrade? Is that where we're at now? Let me know where you sit on this in the comments down below. All right, get ready for a classic NVIDIA head scratcher. The company has quietly vanished the R RTX 5080 and 5090 Founders Edition cards from its store in some parts of the world. No announcement, no explanation, just gone. Let's dig into it. Yep, you got that right. The uh, RTX 5080 and 5090 Founders Edition removed from NVIDIA's store in some regions. Yesterday, NVIDIA began mysteriously delisting the Founders Edition 5080 and 5090 from its website, but only in select regions and not always both cards. In the United States and United Kingdom, both cards are no longer available for order directly from NVIDIA. In Germany and France, on the other hand, the delisting is limited to only the 5090 Founders Edition. Now, this has a lot of people speculating. We have been talking nonstop about 50 series supercards. When are those coming? When are they going to drop? Is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? Some people using this to further some speculation on what's coming up around the corner. This was initially spotted by Computerbase.de, a prominent German PC hardware news site, who asked in video whether or not this is a permanent change and has yet to receive a reply at the time of writing. If that's a case, this could potentially be the sign of an imminent Super 50 series refresh, or on the flip side, this could be true too, Nvidia has simply decided to defer production of high-end 50 series cards to AIB partners rather than making more Founders Edition cards. That could be too. Now, some reasoning behind this, why would Nvidia delist some of the 
Founders Edition cards, some speculation here, we can see why NVIDIA would choose to discontinue the production of Founders Edition 58 and 5090 GPUs. The best performing versions of these cards are usually not Founders Edition cards, although Founders Edition cards, in my opinion, look pretty damn cool. To squeeze the most out of an NVIDIA GPU, a card from an AIB partner willing to slap on a much beefier cooling solution with pre-bend chips is usually the way to go if you're okay with larger form factors. I mean, there's cards like this MSI 5080 Expert OC where you get a better performance out of the box and an even more substantial boost of up to 18% when you start messing with overclocking and things like that, which obviously those more advanced cooling solutions help you in that pursuit. But man, this is uh, this is just a classic NVIDIA move. We're gonna, we're gonna keep everybody guessing and let the rumor mill do the marketing for you. It's kind of the way things go these days. Now, I've been hearing a lot of people in the community saying that this is a good omen, that if the Super Series is on its way, it's a win-win, but I can't help but feel for folks who are about to pull the trigger on a new card. Then again, I still stand fast in my opinion that the Super cards are not going to come around until CES of 2026. And at that point, it also comes down to availability when you can actually snag one. And I think that the fact that they did this so quietly is really what's kind of getting to people, right? But you know what? It's at the end of the day, like it, hate it, love it. It's all part of the game, right? They want to create demand for the next thing. And the best way to do that is to make the current thing disappear. Frustrating for some of us, brilliant business move for them. I suppose. Uh, for now, it's hard to speak on the true fate of the Founders Edition RTX 5080 and 5090 GPUs without further comment from NVIDIA. So we'll see what ends up coming from that, if anything at all, on NVIDIA's end. Let me know what you guys think about this. Does this mean that the 50 series super GPUs are right around the corner, or do we still have a little bit of time? Let me know some of your guesses and conjecture in the comments down below. Things are about to get spicy in the GPU market. AMD just dropped a major hint that it has a big GPU surprise planned to counter NVIDIA. Video. We've got rumors that are already flying with everyone guessing if, oh, could it be the mythical RX 9080 XT? Maybe. Let's dig into it. That's right. AMD drops a hint that it's planning a big GPU surprise for NVIDIA soon. What could it be? Could it be the 9080 XT? I don't know. There are some big things happening around this. This is actually a pretty interesting nugget and it involves Lisa making a little bit of an appearance at CES in 2026. Why would she do such a thing? Could it be this or could it be more AI? I don't know, let's dig into it. AMD could have a big GPU surprise up its sleeve for Nvidia at CES 2026 coming up right here in January. Boy, Nvidia, AMD gonna be trading blows at CES coming up and we love to see it in the name of competition. This is a good thing. This comes from an announcement that Lisa Su is to deliver the keynote for AMD at CES next year, in which the CEO mentions there will be revelations on the gaming front and with Radeon and Ryzen products. The press statement talks about Lisa Su's keynote in broad terms, but also touches on some specific areas of tech, hinting that these will be the focus of whatever AMD has planned for CES 2026. Boy, that sure is broad, isn't it? Listen, the more they fight, the more we win, right? This is the kind of competition that we need in the market. Keeps both companies honest and and hopefully, just I'm praying, hopefully keeps prices in check as well. The key part of the blurb is the following from the leadership of AMD Epic processors in the data center to the acceleration enabled by AMD Instinct GPUs and the advancements driven by Ryzen CPUs and Radeon graphics and AI PCs and gaming, AMD technology continues to spur innovation. This suggests a couple things. AI and Epic will be the main thrust of her presentation. It always comes back to AI, doesn't it? But here's where things get juicy. The hint is that Sue will also talk about the consumer side of AMD's products with Ryzen CPUs and Radeon graphics mentioned specifically. Now this could just be like general speculation, just general terms, just throwing a bunch of buzzwords out. However, it does hint at something coming in terms of next gen CPUs and GPUs from AMD. Now this is actually very important as well. Remember these kind of statements are carefully crafted and Clues are often dropped to stoke hype well before an event kicks off. And I think that this might be the case here. This is coming from Tech Radar, particularly when we consider what AMD has in the works. Namely, you've got the new Zen 6 processors and the RDNA 5 graphics cards in the pipeline. Taking AMD's desktop Ryzen CPUs first, considering that the next gen ships aren't expected to debut until later in 2026, the very start of the year feels too early for an announcement, which is most likely going to end up coming up in Computex, which would be in the middle of next year. In a similar vein, RDNA 5 GPUs, or they might be UDNA, could be even further out with the current theory being 2026 or heck, even 2027 launch. So neither of these next gen ranges is on the horizon, but it's still possible we could see an early teaser of them. Now, this is where things get a little bit more optimistic in the near term, should something like this come up at CES. On the graphics card front, there's another possibility. There have been some rumors floating around that AMD might have something else planned in the way of a higher end RDNA 4 GPU. This is where we start talking about, ooh, we get really 
really excited about the 9080 XT and oh, wouldn't that be fun? The rumor mill has aired the idea of a top end RX 9080 XT that essentially cranks the power usage, clock speeds to be an upgrade over the 9070 XT, which has seen great adoption as a very well received card. Is that a realistic prospect? Who knows? I mean, this is a huge play for Team Red and it might just mean some better prices for us gamers. The more they fight, again, the better deals we get, hopefully. Let's talk about the community, what you guys are saying. I'm curious what you think. Let me know down below. In the meantime, I had a chance to look at what people are saying around the internet. Everyone is guessing what the surprise is gonna be. You've got rumors flying. It's an interesting time to be a gamer and overwhelmingly positive reception from the community. Everyone's ready for a showdown between the two giants and they're hoping, again, that it leads to maybe some price cuts. It's, listen, all we can do is pray at this point. So based on all this information coming out from AMD, what do you think? What's AMD preparing for CES 2026? Heck, what are they preparing for Computex 2026? It's gonna be a fun time. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure that you're liked and subscribed if you like keeping up with news like this on the channel. Most importantly, what's the first game you're gonna play on the 9080 XT? Just kidding. Who knows? Maybe you do. Let me know. We'll see you next time.